We put together a panel as well here in studio and at our BNN studios to talk about the different types of cuts that are being recommended in this report. With me here is Natalie Mira. She is the director of the Ontario Health Coalition, as well as Annie Kidder, executive director of People for Education. And in our downtown Toronto studio, Gregory Thomas is the federal and Ontario director of the Canadian Taxpayers Federation. All right, Annie, I'd like to start with you. Okay. Um, education takes a lot of cuts, uh, though spending will still increase, but there are a number of measures that are proposed, including scrapping full-day kindergarten. The minister's already said he won't do that. What about some of the other things on the table? What's your reaction to those? Well, I was actually surprised at the things that were new that hadn't been leaked already. Mm -hmm. So there, uh, Drummond recommends a 25% cut to funding for textbooks and classroom supplies and computers. He recommends fees for busing, as you said. Mm -hmm. He also recommends fees for lots of kids when they get to grade 12 realize, uh oh, I, you know, I should have taken different courses or I, I need higher grades to get into the institution I want to get into. He's suggesting charging fees if you want more credits in high school. Um, and across the board, cuts nearly ten, cutting nearly 10,000 staff uh, that are support staff. So they're people like uh, child and youth workers, educational assistants, psychologists, social workers. So this is a really, you know, it's a big heavy report. I can see and it in your yes, hands there. There it is. Big it's and very, heavy very indeed. large. Um, and, and I think there are the, the, the recommendations. I guess my worry is the recommendations are kind of bottom line financial ones um, that don't necessarily uh, recognize or talk about that when you, when you put money in education, it's an investment actually. It's not just a cost. And we, all of us, all taxpayers, all citizens, get that money back tenfold in the money we don't spend on health care, on criminal justice, things all like right, that. All right, hold that thought. Investment is often something that's talked about in terms of health care as well. Natalie, there were a number of recommendations here. Health care spending will still go up, but there's recommendations for consolidations of health care units, different types of services, including cesareans, might be cut if they're not emergency. Uh, what's your sense of where the health care um, recommendations are going? Are they too far or too little? Oh, the cuts are very dramatic that he's proposing. The bottom line, he's saying that health care funding should be about half of the in less than half of the increases that it's been for the last eight years or so. He's saying that hospitals and OHIP would see cuts to the tune of about four billion in terms of uh, reductions, curtailment in, in the increase in spending, uh, particularly targeted at those two. And of course, there's not enough resources then left um, for long-term care homes or home care to take the offloaded patients. So what we'd be looking at, um, he's suggesting um, hospital amalgamations and closures. Uh, which would hit, hit, of course, rural communities. He's suggesting private for-profit clinics, so like the American-style, you know, for-profit uh, hospitals, et cetera, moving in. Um, he's suggesting uh, cuts targeted mainly at hospitals, but right now we already have 30,000 people in Ontario waiting for a hospital bed, a nursing home bed, or home care. So we already have huge backlogs, which were not mentioned in his report, um, of needed care. I have to ask you the question, if he's going to be cutting back delisting <coughs> services as they already did delist some services in Ontario, should one of the options on the table be that those services be payable out of your own pocket, that you be allowed, for example, to buy services that right now you're prohibited because the Canada Health Act does not allow for-profit medicine in a general sense? You know what, the, the whole basis of our education system and our health care system is this kind of idea of universality, that you know, judge and janitor would share a hospital ward. And the reason for that is that the judges then have an interest in having a good hospital ward for everybody. If you start to remove that, what you get is the American system of health care, which is one, more expensive, and two, serves most of the population much worse. It really is, a, that is the result of that uh, approach. That's not to say that there are things that shouldn't be controlled. We do need fiscal prudence, there's no question. And there's no question that there are ways of providing health care that could be more efficient. But, but to only look at the cost side and not look at the revenue side when Ontario spends eighth of 10 provinces, we're almost at the bottom of the country mm -hmm. in health care spending. We're almost at the bottom of the country in all spending, including education. Um, you know, that really is a problem, and it's a very biased way of looking at things. Yeah, well, yet spending has gone up by $40.5 over the past five years. And I know, Greg Thomas, that's an issue that your organization, the Canadian Taxpayers Federation, uh, has a lot of problems with. So what's your reaction to this? There are a number of revenue-raising sin tax increases and other things on the table here. Were you surprised by those? Do you think there should be increases as well as cuts? 
Well, Don Drummond is a liberal after all, and he even, uh, even slammed the Taxpayers Protection Act, saying it uh, fettered the ability of government to raise revenue. So, uh, uh, yeah, we, we weren't surprised that he found ways to skirt around his mandate of not talking about tax grabs, but uh, I think the people in your studio are in for a rude, rude awakening. I mean, the fact is, uh, McGinty's finance minister predicted a balanced budget by 2017 before the election, and now Don Drummond's come out and said that was all nonsense. They're headed for a $30 billion deficit. They're, they're on track to double Ontario's debt before the, uh, before the end of next year. And, you know, they're in a lot of financial trouble. They have got to cut spending. So I, I think we're talking a rude awakening here for sure. Okay. Annie, you want to respond to that? I mean, yes. do we need, I mean, isn't there some tough medicine needed there, to curb this situation? Yes, but also there's, there is actually a revenue prob problem, and I guess where, luckily, I'm not a politician or speaking for a political party, I think we do have to talk about taxes. I think one of the things we have to remember is that, that it really has to do with our income as a, as a government. Uh, we lost $14 billion of income through tax cuts and this is what happens you get this so we have to remember that you get what you pay for and that when we all pay I know this is an unpopular position but it's one people have to start thinking about when we all pay a little bit and a little tiny bit more we get really a lot for that so when we have to weigh the difference between paying but for buses we've been paying a lot more though for quite a while we, and we, we're paying a lot less actually in taxes we've had huge tax cuts and we've lost 14 billion dollars in income so what if we don't want to pay taxes, we'll have to pay for education and we'll have to pay for health care. Okay, Natalie, we don't have a lot of time left. Your uh, response here. Sure. Well, when we say we, you know, it's kind of loosely. The tax cuts in Ontario have been the most prolonged and the deepest in the country. And they've been going on for 15 years. And they've mainly benefited the wealthy and corporations. Um, and they're hurting the average person. So we're already paying user fees as a result. And we're just going to see worse if we don't engage in this debate. This oh. is the debate. Okay, yeah. Greg, you're going to have the last word. I see you shaking your head here. <laughs> Get in there. A high school teacher in Toronto makes $94,000 a year. That's 12000 more than a teacher in Vancouver makes. It's $22,000 more than a teacher in Quebec makes. They get laser eye surgery. They get wellness counseling. This is a Cadillac budget, and, and Ontarians can't afford it. We had a world economic meltdown. 400,000 Canadians lost their jobs. Not a, not a single Ontario public servant participated in that. And that's because McGinty borrowed over a hundred billion dollars to keep the fairy tale going on. Well, the fairy tale is over. Time is up. Okay. Unfortunately, <laughs> time is up for us too. It's the conversation that we're going to be having again on this show, no doubt. Annie Kidder, Natalie Mira, Greg Thomas. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks, Ryan.